Hello, welcome everyone. Do you want to know what this wavetable would sound like? This video is geared toward musicians who always wanted to get into programming but find it a little bit hard to digest at the beginning and yeah this is just a, meant as a fun little project that you can make. You want to make your own wavetables with math and you know there is the serum formula parser but either you might not have serum or you just want to have even more power than the formula parser and the wavetable editor in serum or you just want to have lots of fun with alternative ways to do anything. So stick around you have to go on my GitHub page and then search for Wavetable Creator Console and download all this stuff. Links in the description. Then you have to download all the stuff from the Juice framework. They also have their own GitHub page where you can just download the code. And then you need an IDE like Visual Studio for Windows, which also has a free version. So up until now and also everything else is going to be free. Now I'm well aware that some of this might be already a little bit daunting, installing a whole framework and a whole IDE for programming and stuff. That's not always as easy as it should be. But gladly there are some videos by the YouTuber, the audio programmer, who are geared towards beginners of the Juice framework and some of these videos are very helpful at figuring out the basics of installing all this kind of stuff. And if there are still some questions left, then put them in the comments or come to the Discord group of the audio programmer because there are a lot of people who like to help with beginner questions like that. Now suppose you already did all this stuff. Go into the folder that you downloaded from me, the Wavetable Creator Console and open its producer file. The producer is basically some sort of project management program. So all you have to do is start up your IDE by clicking on this button. I already did that, so I'm basically here. You can really see what's going on in this piece of code, which is just one file with less than 200 lines. And all you have to care about is everything that starts at this function called main. So basically, every wavetable has 2048 samples and there are 200 56 tables. These numbers do make a lot of sense. For example, they are completely used just like this in Serum and I think in Vital as well. But they are also making sense from a musical perspective because 248 samples is usually around at the frequency where there is the difference between rhythm and pitch. You know that's just the property of waves that if you play a wave low enough then it starts to sound like rhythm and that's basically also how LFOs work by the way. So this is basically that transitional frequency in samples around that number. It's a little bit of a different number but this has to do with optimizations and you don't care about that now. Now this is a so-called lambda and it describes what happens for each sample of each wavetable. That's why its input arguments are x which is a number between minus 1 and 1 the x-axis and the table index, so basically on which table it currently is. And then you're just trying to return something that represents the y-axis for this point. And you can already see that this reflects my Desmos. First of all, we have p, which is table index divided by num tables. And this creates us a number between 0 and 1, just like this p parameter here. Then we are rounding it to 32 times p and call that a, which is the second line here. Round is rind in C++. Now we have a lambda in a lambda, and this new lambda is called big S, just like here. It has three arguments, x, n, and m, and you can see that reflected here as well. And then it just contains a sum. And the sum in math is written like this. We're starting at n1, going to big N, and we're doing this for each thing. And that's added to the sum. At the end, we'll divide through m. In C++, you're doing it like this. You're calling a variable sum, starting at 0. Then you have your conditions here, like starting at 1 and going to n. 1 and n and then on each iteration of this loop we are adding to the sum whatever is in the sum which is this function and at the end we divide by m in this particular function and then i just have this function call here with x a and 1 and it creates our analog sum then there is the creator object which just takes the table size num tables and the function that was defined up here 
and create a wave table from that. Then you can optionally remove DC offset and normalize the table. But you can also comment them out like this if you need to or want to. Then you just have to give it a name in this little space and hit the compile button and it will compile. At some point you will see this little message here, press any key to close the window and you can do that. And the program has finished running. And on your desktop there is now a new folder. If it hasn't been there before, wavetable creator. And there, there is the file that you have made. So now that we know how to make wavetables, let's actually have some fun with this. For example, here I made multiple function calls of these. And as you can see, they look very mesmerizing together. So the obvious uh, thing to do is to just add them all together. And it looks like this. So this looks pretty cool, so I definitely want to know how that would sound like as a wavetable. Now the thing is, these are Fibonacci numbers and I can be more elegant in code than I can in Desmos. So basically, these are Fibonacci numbers. So I will make an array now and it's of type float and it has seven elements in it. And I will call this the Fibonacci array. And then GitHub Copilot will hopefully just fill it for me, yeah. I have to explain myself here for the noobs. GitHub Copilot is a recent innovation where an AI constantly reads what you are programming and then it um, suggests some things that should happen. There is one thing that I don't like here specifically now, which is that it has the one twice. I know that's part of the Fibonacci numbers, but I'm, I'm not really into it. So let's instead just take one more. So we have a little bit more space. Now we can make another sum here. And you already guess what's going to happen, I think. Sometimes the suggestions from GitHub Copilot are not that nice. And they can be a little bit distracting at times too. Let's say what it suggests me here. Getting the Fibonacci sequence of n. So basically iterating through the entire thing. But we don't want to start with the first thing, but just with the second one. And then using that in the formula, is it, is it what I did here? No. See, and that's where GitHub Copilot can get confused. This still needs to be A, but this needs to be F. And then we can return the sum instead. And this should now create something like this, but instead of only going from one to five, we are going from one to 21, because that's the length of the array. Analog saw. FIP21. Okay, let's just try. Now, I didn't edit this part because I wanted to show you how long it can take to compile lots of sums like this. That is probably the reason or one of the reasons why it doesn't exist in Serum because that would just confuse the hell out of everyone. Anyway, I want to make another one, which is this one specifically. Because I just like how it feels to see this and it's a very specific one that really should only go to from 1 to 5. So we are reducing this from Fibonacci size to 0, 1, 2, 5 is the one where it doesn't work anymore. And now I have to add another condition which is every other 
thing is going to have a minus instead of a plus in here. So I'm going to do that like if n by two is zero. Oh, cool. Let's look at that. But it has too much suggestion in here. I just want to have this part. Great, that's basically it. If it's divisible by zero, then plus, else, minus. I hope it's this way around and not the other way around. But anyway, now this should be the, the plus minus one. These names become quite ugly at this point, but let's, let's just run this now. That was quite fast, probably because I made this last loop a little bit shorter. One other thing, which is one that basically multiplies these kind of things. We can ignore this constant here because we are normalizing the table at the end anyway. Say, so what do we have here? S1 is x, a, and 1. And with 1, that means Fibonacci of 1 times. Same thing, but Fibonacci of 5. And then minus 3 and 7. No, 3 and 5 I have in here. Well, that's kind of weird. Why didn't I ever try to use two? Two looks nice. Whoa. Okay, okay. Changing plans. Plus this and this. Yeah, so now this is the Fibonacci multi. Yeah, let's go. All right, let's listen to all these. I gotta say, these last two ones, I made them before I started making this video, which is basically this function and this one. Which has a nice spirally look, in my opinion. Now let's actually throw them into our wavetable synthesizer of choice. So first of all, we will try Serum. Now in Serum, in order to get a good quality wavetable, you can just add the exact number of samples and then every drag operation will use these settings. So which one do we want to try? I would say I'm starting with this one. Now the first two tables seem to contain nothing. So we can just reduce it a little bit. And now... Okay, so I just had a nice idea about this wavetable, which is that we actually only use the first um, 48 samples. And everything else will be removed. Remove um, just the ones that are selected, maybe. Current index. Huh? What? 
Okay, I don't know. It's kind of... Okay, that did what I wanted to do, right? Cool, now I just have to cross fade it spectrally and we have a smooth table again. Sweet. Let's try another one. Now this one has discontinuities at the edges and that's why I also made this other one with the windowing. Let's try that instead. I really like that. It has sort of a vocal quality to it, in my opinion. All right, great. So now we can see we can use them um, in synthesizers. By the way, you can also use this as an opportunity to learn more about how to make wavetables how to store wavetables, how to apply DC offset and normalize to the wavetables and how to use the juice frameworks methods to, for example, write a wave file to your desktop, which is like this. All right, everyone, I hope you had lots of fun, no matter if you are a musician or a programmer or both at the same time. And I would love to hear from you what you're doing with this. If you're a programmer, maybe you want to use this in your plugins on, and make formula passes now as well, or just use this to create cool wavetables for your plugins. And if you're a musician, if you use this to make certain wavetable experiments just for being used in a synthesizer, just like I did. Um, yeah, see ya.